Atma course. Get smart. Get ahead. We move to a very different and a very important concept, which is called the fraud triangle. What is a fraud triangle? I'm sure we all of us know what a triangle is. So, in case of a fraud, there is something called a fraud triangle. So, this is what it is. Donald Cressy, uh, in the early 1940s, did some PhD dissertation on 200 embezzlers, uh, persons who had swindled money or misappropriated money. So, he did a, uh, a dissertation on his PhD's theme was to understand the behavior of these embezzlers or these fraudsters. So what he found was a common link, a common lining which bound all these embezzlers. There are three very important uh, commonality which bound them, a behavioral trait which bound them together. So he did a thesis around it and came to a conclusion which came to be known as the fraud triangle, Donald Cressy's fraud triangle. So let's understand the aspects of a fraud triangle. He says there is a perceived opportunity. There is a pressure and a rationalization. Perceived opportunity, pressure and rationalization are the three key components for a fraud. So when a fraud happens, somebody has to look for these three traits or these three behavioral patterns. An opportunity which is made use of. There is a pressure on somebody to do this act and also there is a rationalization of the part of the fraudster or the perpetrator to say that what he was doing was right. Let's understand what each of these are. All the three elements are a prerequisite for a fraud to be perpetrated. It's very quite uh, uh, a very uh, strong statement to say that the three elements are very important. Each element has to coexist with the other. These could be mutually exclusive ones, but they necessarily have to coexist with each other for somebody to understand whether a fraud has happened and how the fraud got perpetrated and what was the end result. So what is perceived opportunity? Perceived opportunity is that there is a position of trust and a technical capability that each one of the frauds to possesses. A person in a fiduciary capacity is more prone to do a fraud, a very uh, uh, a corollary and, a, and an opposite statement, uh, which would mean here that a person who is part of the organization for so many years Need not, need not necessarily be part of the organization for so many years. As an example, if you if you want to look at a person, if he is of long standing, he is occupying a position of trust, it could happen to be a manager, a supervisor, or a part of uh, the board, in other words, a board member, who occupies this position by virtue of his long standing or by virtue of his professional qualification, by virtue of his the trust reposed by the management on him and the technical capabilities for him to carry out his work. So he has got technical capabilities. Technical capabilities is a very um, generic uh, word. It can be used for various uh, uh, in connotations, in various connotations and various uh, situations. So, a person could be technically competent in each of his profession or vocation. So, if he is occupying such a position, there is a so-called perceived opportunity 
according to Donald Cressy. Now you may ask me where would there be any fraud which could happen in a position other than a position of trust or or in a fiduciary capacity. The frauds may happen but it may not be of that frequent or it may not be a case where the person is really be is able to maybe the intent is there but he may not be able to really carry out a fraud because his options are limited whereas in the case of a person who is in a position of trust has got his options open all right pressure what is a pressure this is another important uh, aspect of a fraud which is part of the fraud triangle a real financial problem that had to be tackled and that which cannot be shared this forms the motive element of a fraud triangle the motivational aspect of a fraud triangle you need to have motivation to do a fraud you can't off the cuff say that a, a person is going to do a fraud with a, with absolutely no motivation for him to do this act because this act is a very dastardly act and it's condemned in every possible manner so what is the motive the motive could be a financial see these are all uh, not uh, cast in stone but this cannot be ignored this can never be ignored the reason being there is a financial pressure so the pressure is in monetary terms is in financial terms a person who is having a, a financial issue so with a financial issue this person is highly prone to do or commit a fraud so he has to tackle this financial problem he doesn't know how to do it he finds a wire media he finds a, a backdoor uh, operation through which he tries to commit this fraud so this financial problem cannot be shared maybe his entire debt which he does not want his employer to know so keeps it hidden he doesn't want to disclose it atma course get smart get ahead